Joining me now is Congressman Andre Carson, Democrat from Indiana, the first Muslim American to serve on the Intelligence Committee. And Jonathan Capot of the Washington Post, thank you both for being here. Thanks, sir. An honor. Thank you, Rev. Congressman, your response to the president's speech. Well, I thought the president's speech was a powerful speech. I thought it was a very important speech. The administration released its first uh, CVE strategy in 2011, and they've been working with many leaders who were present at the summit today in a way that helps to foster a greater understanding and cooperation in terms of pushing back on extremist activities. Now, there's a growing concern, Reverend, that the emphasis has been too heavy on Muslims, but I think at a time when we have folks who are claiming to be Muslim and claiming to represent Islam who are committing violent acts against fellow human beings, it's time that the Muslim community comes together and say enough is enough. Now, you are a member of the Intellig Intelligence Committee. You're an elected member of Congress. I've been to your district with you yes. and churches there. That's right. And you are a practicing Muslim. Yes, sir. Is there <laughs> anything in Islam that you know and practice that in any way justifies or calls for the kind of behavior that we've seen from those that have identified themselves as ISIS or ISIL? Absolutely not. Uh, Islam means peace, and the history shows that of peace. Of course, any religion has examples of those claiming or purporting to be adherents of that faith uh, to have committed violent acts uh, throughout its history, but I think that's a small fraction, and it doesn't represent the over billion Muslims uh, who... Uh, inhabit this globe and it's unfortunate that it takes a small fraction of extremists uh, who claim to be Muslim to misrepresent the faith that is so uh, you reverend have have worked with Muslims throughout your career uh, I know in my own community growing up in the inner city uh, watching Muslims take control of their communities doing what law enforcement had failed to do in keeping those communities safe and pushing out drug activities now, if the president, therefore, made this, even by inference, seem like a war against religion or a particular religious group which you practice, rather than a war against terrorists, as he said, would he not risk deeply offending some Americans who choose to practice a religion that you do that does not at all require or call upon or condone this kind of activity? Oh, without question. And I think whenever... You step out there boldly in that kind of way in an official capacity, you risk offending some people. And given the history of the Muslim community's uh, relationship with law enforcement, relationship with the government, uh, dating back to J. Edgar Hoover's counterintelligence program, uh, many in the black community warned the immigrant Muslim community decades before of the kind of relationship that has all too often been transactional, Reverend, and has been a cover to spy on communities. Yep. And, and the president noted that in his speech, and I commend him for being bold in doing so. Jonathan, the president mm -hmm. is prosecuting a serious effort against ISIS, and yet you have Republicans literally accusing him of fighting for the other side. What's your response to that? Well, it's outrageous. Uh, anyone who would say that the commander-in-chief of the United States uh, would side with an enemy, and side with an enemy so brutal, um, really doesn't deserve to be an elected official. I mean, it's outrageous to hear a sitting member of Congress say out loud uh, that he thinks that the president is working against people who would love nothing more than to destroy this country. And what that clip you showed of Congressman Perry uh, from Pennsylvania shows is that the hope that the craziness and silliness uh, and the birtherism and the otherism that was coming out of the, the 113th Congress and ever since um, the Tea Party folks swarmed Capitol Hill in 2010, that that was going to go away with the 114th Congress, the new Congress that seated because there were more reasonable members of the Republican Party who were elected to the House. Uh, it's, it, we now know that that's no longer the case. It, we are still back to having the president not only battle uh, you know, enemies of the country overseas who want to not only bring down the United States, but just Western civilization. But he also has to deal with 
Republic, some Republicans on Capitol Hill who still to this day, six, seven years into his tenure as President of the United States, still questioning whether he loves this country and whether he will do everything possible to protect this country. You know, Congressman, the President rejected the idea that the West is involved in some sort of holy war, and he also called on Muslim leaders to reject that idea. Listen to this. We are not at war with Islam. We are at war with people who have perverted Islam. Just as those of us outside Muslim communities need to reject the terrorist narrative that the West and Islam are in conflict or modern life and Islam are in conflict, I also believe that Muslim communities have a responsibility as well. Congressman, why is it important to talk about uh, this is a fight against terrorists and not this is some uh, epic clash of civilizations? Well, I think that uh, there has been too much of an emphasis on placed on the president's usage of certain phraseology. Uh, this is not a class of civilizations, as it were, but I think that folks of goodwill, be they Sikh, Hindu, Jewish, Christian, Catholic, Muslim, non-theist, must come together and make a stand, take a stand, and acknowledge that if you go in any major courtroom, uh, you can find a Muslim attorney or a Muslim judge. My father-in-law happens to be the first elected Muslim judge in the country, Judge David Shaheed. Go to any major hospital, you'll find a Muslim physician. There are Muslims who are making investments in our country each and every day in positive ways. And so the greater question becomes, how can we as Americans who believe in a pluralistic society, who know that our country is a melting pot, say that we will not stand uh, uh, with those who are Islamophobic and those who seek to cast aspersions on one particular group when there's only a small fraction of those who claim to be Muslim who misrepresent the greater Muslim community. Enough and, is enough. and at the same time, Jonathan, stand firmly against Islamophobia, but stand firmly against terrorism without mm -hmm. using this as some way to pivot into a partisan shot at the president. These people are beheading people are mm. taking people's heads off, and you use that to take a cheap shot at the president? Yeah, I mean, the, the whole tenor and tone of the debate, especially around, you know, the rise of ISIS or, or ISIL has been very discouraging. And I thought the, the president's remarks that you played earlier uh, were very important, where he said, you know, we're not, we're not going to battle against religious leaders. They want us to legitimize them as religious leaders. They're not religious leaders. They're terrorists. Yep. And as long, I mean, it would be great if people on, if everyone on Capitol Hill were to take that to heart and rally around and all the, the leaders in, in the Western world who ha and in the Middle East who are trying to deal with these, these savage people who are beheading people and killing people, um, all in the name of what, I don't know. They might be, they might think that they're, they're doing this uh, uh, in the name of Islam, in the name of Allah, but we all know the truth. And the president mm -hmm. has been trying to get that across to the American people for I a long time, to and I hope today... I hope today that they got that message. But I hope they did that he did as well. I hope people got it. And if you can't rally around the president, Jonathan, at least rally around what is decent and what will preserve human life, but rise above this partisan bickering when we're dealing with this kind of element uh, that wants to distort religion. Congressman Andre Carson.